the, the head part of the hoodie, you were just explaining the entire garment, correct? Uh, the head part also. Okay. Well, did the head part have a half a hoodie? Uh, it was a hoodie that came up like a tall collar. I see. Like in the front, yeah. Okay. It didn't come all the way to the forehead of the person. Is that what you're saying? It did, but there was an opening that you could see the uh, partial face. Okay. So there was no mask or anything. Okay, but the person did have a mask on? No. 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 Were their lips and nose uh, fully up? evident to you? At some time. Okay. Was there an attempt to completely describe their face as you saw the person that evening? No. Okay. And when um, you detected what you did with regard to the hair, did you see any particular type of hair do? No. Okay. So at this particular time, you couldn't describe um, if the person had a, a fade hair or dreadlocks or curls or in fact was bald, could you? No. Okay. Did you in fact give the police any physical description of the person? I did. Okay. And what, did that go to height and possible weight and things like that? Yes. Okay. And how, how, if you recall, what was the physical description that you gave? Now, if I can recall, I believe that person might have been around 145, 150 pounds, about 5'7", along that line. I see. And uh, you recall that, the making that statement on the evening in question? Uh, I believe so. Okay. That was your voice on the uh, 911 call we heard? Yes, it was. Okay. That recognized the, the stretch that you were in that evening? I beg your pardon? That recognized the distress you were in that evening? Uh, yes. Okay. May I, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Stewart, with regard to the height of the perpetrator you were dealing with, you you said the height of six foot. Is that correct? Or uh, tell no, me what the height was foot. again. Approximately around five seven, five six, five seven. Okay, so if the person accused here is six foot tall, that would not represent the height that you had described. Is that correct? Um, not five. If the person is six foot, no. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else? Just a few questions. Was there more than one person involved in that robbery of your house that night? Yes, there was more than one. When Mr. McWilliams was asking you questions about the, the description of the person that you said was 5'6", five, 5'7", five, was that the person that you were dealing with in your bedroom? Yes. Did you get a, a physical description of the other two suspects that were also robbing your home that night? Uh, I was only aware of one other one. Okay. I didn't see a third one. You didn't see a third person? No. Okay. Um, how would you describe this, the other person that you saw, the second suspect, that you saw back in April 15th of last year? Uh, they were approximately the same height and same size. Okay. Um, was that second person similarly dressed as the first? Yes. Um, could you see the second person's face? No. Okay. Um, you described for us last week um, before we broke, um, some distinguishing features of the shoes the person you were dealing with was wearing, is that correct? Correct. Can you describe that for me again, please? Uh, they were black shoes with a uh, white emblem on the side. At that time, I don't really know designer shoes, so I said Adidas, but as I looked, that sign, I mean, that symbol was uh, Nike. Hmm. Okay. I yeah. heard you saying it had a, a switch like, or a check mark? Like a curve, like a comma hmm, okay. type design. And you told us last week that you thought that was Adidas, correct? Right. And today you're saying it's, you think you may have been mistaken about the manufacturer of that type of uh, gym shoe? Correct. 
Uh, today, uh, you're thinking it might be more of a Nike, is that correct? That's correct. Did the shoe the person was wearing that you were dealing with, was it black? Yes. And did it have a um, that check mark or that swoosh that you just told me? Yes, it was a white emblem. White emblem. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, Mr. Stewart. I don't have any questions. Nothing further, Your Honor. Any questions by the jurors? Ms. Stewart, thank you very much. You may step down, ma'am. You may remain in the courtroom or, or you may be dismissed if you'd like, whatever your preference. Mr. Moran, you have another witness? Now, before we the proceed with the next um, witness, we, I would move to the People's Proposed Exhibit Number 124. It is six pieces of paper held together by a staple, which are um, certified as the defendant's guilty plea as it relates to the uh, armed robbery that occurred on April 15, 2015 on Hilldell Street in the city of Detroit. There's a partial transcript um, containing the factual basis of the defendant's admission of guilt for this particular offense. I move to admit 124. You've seen that transcript, uh, Mr. McLean? I have, Your Honor. All right. It will be admitted without objection. Foundation having been laid, correct? Acknowledged. All right. It will be received, 124.
Mr. McWilliams, I'll, I'll leave it to you at, at this time if there's some, if there's some additional portion that you want the jury to see, you can show it to them at this time, or if procedurally you would prefer to wait till a later time, if you choose, I'll, I'll leave that to you. How's that? Thank you very much, uh, Your Honor. That's assuming that there, are, there was or is some other portion of it, and I'm not, I'll tell the court I'm not aware of any. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. All right, we have another witness? We do. Uh, we're waiting on a witness to arrive. We're going to go a lot of order, if that's okay. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, we'll be calling uh, Randy Zolke at this point. <coughs> All right. Sir, do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to hear will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth self you got? Please have a seat. Adjust the microphone in front of you. Your Honors, uh, I understand that this witness uh, is going to talk about um, material or information that was received from a cell phone or cell phone numbers. And um, they were, in fact, uh, and acknowledged to be cell phone, several cell phones not necessarily connected with, with Mr. Uh, Smith, but we'll see. The fact of the matter is that cell phones contain a lot of information, and there are, there are only relevant information here, and I will stipulate that this will be only the relevant information as to the case, 
and not uh, the entire the entirety of uh, a cell phone dump, as we sometimes call it. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McWilliams. And thank you, Mr. McWilliams, and Your Honor. And I believe that the defense counsel has accurately stated what has been marked as People's Exhibit uh, Number One Nine Zero, a stipulation as to the fact that um, what is going to be presented. Uh, from these three cell phones is the only relevant information uh, as agreed to by the parties uh, as to this particular case. So with that, I, I move to admit <coughs> Exhibit 190, the stipulation as to that fact. Subject to seeing the judge. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Okay, 190 will be received. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Good, uh, good morning. Good morning. Can you please introduce yourself to the jury? Uh, my name is Randy Zolke. I'm a special agent for his examiner for the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Detroit office. And how long have you been working for the Federal Bureau of Investigation? Uh, I've been working for the FBI for approximately 19 years. And can you briefly describe your duties and responsibilities um, as an agent of the S FBI to the jury, please? Uh, as a forensics examiner for the uh, FBI, my primary responsibilities are the recovery, analysis, and reporting of digital evidence uh, related to a case. And how long have you been performing forensic examinations for the FBI? I've been conducting forensic examinations for six years as a forensic examiner and nine years as a supervisor. And uh, have you received any training in forensic examinations on cell phones? Yes, I have approximately 700 hours of both uh, commercial or private sector training and in-house FBI training. And have you, and have you uh, supervised others regarding cell phone examinations? Yes, I have supervised uh, up to 35 personnel at one time regarding uh, forensics examinations. And what kind of cell phones would you say that you examine as part of your job? Uh, as a forensic examiner, we run across all models, makes and models, both uh, iOS or Apple-based and Android-based uh, cell phones. Now just briefly, can you describe to the jury, when your office receives a phone, how does it wind up on your desk for examination? What's the process that goes through? Uh, sure. Once an item has been... Um, obtained through either legal process or consent. Um, that evidence is submitted to our evidence control center or evidence control room. It's, a, it's an evidence room that uh, um, has uh, restrictions as to who can access uh, that evidence. Once it's submitted, a chain of custody is attached to that evidence and a unique evidence uh, 1B number is assigned to it for tracking purposes. Once that evidence has been submitted, a forensic examiner like myself would check out the evidence uh, take it to our lab uh, upstairs on another floor and uh, process that evidence. So there's a unique number assigned to that item? Right? Uh, yes, there is. There's a unique 1B number associated with it. Now, when you receive that phone, how do you extract information from it? The um, standard operating procedure that we follow uh, is once we check out that phone along with the chain of custody, we bring it back to the lab, we put the phone in a shielded or RF shield box so the phone, once it's turned on, can't communicate with the cellular network. So someone does not have remote access to that phone. Once it's put in the shielded box, it's put in the airplane mode, which keeps it from communicating with the cellular network. And then we take the phone and um, connect it to the cell phone forensics uh, workstation and um, utilize a forensic tool, in this case, Celebrite's uh, UFED for PC to do the actual extraction and report generation. And this process that you've just described, is this a standard procedure used by law enforcement through the country? Uh, this is the FBI standard operating procedure, but yes, in general, uh, the software utilized Celebrite's uh, UFED 4 PC is an uh, industry-wide recognized uh, forensic tool for cell phone extractions. Now, what sort of information are you able to extract using this process that you've just described? Uh, depending on the type of uh, extraction, and there's three different types, a, a logical, a file system, and a physical extraction, um, SMS, uh, short message service, or texts, uh, MMS, multimedia message service, uh, calendar events, um, emails, um, other types of files, images, audio files. Now, did you use this process uh, with any items involved in this case? Uh, yes, I did. Now, I'm approaching with what has been pre-marked as exhibit number 297. Thank you. May I approach your honor? Yes. Now, can you please open that package? What is that 
right there. Just put it in your hands. It's uh, one of the cell phones that I examined for this case. And how do you know that kind of cell phone's been used in this? Um, uh, the evidence tracking that I talked about, um, it's assigned a unique 1B number. In this case, it was 1B18. Evidence that I received, I will initial and date. So this was the envelope that I received from the evidence control room. Also, Detroit uh, Police Department has their own unique evidence ID number, which is the 542-320-29. And this phone... This phone was the phone I conducted an examination on. Uh, I moved to admit this solely for identification purposes. All right. For identification purposes, I will connect you for the record. Exhibit number 297. Now, Mr. Zulke, I'm approaching with what has been marked. I'm approaching with what has been marked, pre marked is uh, exhibit 182. Can you tell me what is that that I just placed into your hands? Uh, this is a copy of the forensics report that I did on the, the phone in question. And how do you know that? I've had a chance to review it and I initial and dated uh, the, the item. And that's a fair and accurate copy of the forensics report that was generated that pro through that process that you just described to the jury? Yes, I've had a chance to review this copy uh, alongside with the, the original report. I move to admit this again solely for identification purposes, Your Honor. All right. It will be uh, received for identification purposes only at this time. Exhibit 182. Now, I'm approaching mm -hmm. with what has been remarked. Um, it's exhibit uh, 27. Please take a look at that, and after you've had a chance to look at it, please look back up at me. These are um, sections from my report uh, regarding the extraction of the um, cell phone in question. And those are fair and accurate uh, copies of segments from that extraction report that you generate uh, from the items extracted from that phone? Yes, they are. Uh, who to admit this as the next exhibit, exhibit number uh, 27, Your Honor? Any objection? Uh, assuming that it's going to uh, be authenticated by further oral testimony and or uh, shown on the screen uh, by the prosecutor. Your Honor, we've created copies uh, for the, both the court and the jurors, if we may at this point distribute them uh, to them. All right, I'll receive uh, Exhibit 27. Uh, we'll
I mean, that could be a piece of things, Councilor. Short one. Short one. Short one. Last question. Thank you. Now, can you please look at the uh, first page uh, of the report? Um, uh, that first page was not generated by you from the report. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. That's not. Um, uh, and that reads the, the items from phone extraction report phone MS395, uh, and that uh, the number for that phone is 313-458-2311. Is that correct? That's correct. And just so uh, the court is aware, this is the first report that regards the stipulation that the defense and I uh, were referring to right at the beginning of this person's testimony. And, it, and it's acknowledged that it was received uh, via a duly signed and executed search warrant uh, with a return of service. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you please turn to the next page? <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you please turn to the next page? The... Uh, now, on page two, it says, on May 23, 2015, Officer Peter Lucas collected this phone in MS-395 at 12713 St. Mary's during an execution of a search warrant there. Below is a picture of the phone taken at that location. Its phone number is 313-458-2311. Now, that information, is, again, that was not extracted during the examination of the cell phone. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. And that is uh, agreed to and stipulated to by the parties as being accurate, is that correct? As to the place of that uh, cell phone, that is not an issue and it's not uh, relevant. As to where it was found, or the coordinates, coordinates of it. Now, uh, now, can everyone turn to the next page, uh, the introductory information? Now, is there certain introductory information that uh, you're able to uh, extract from the cell phones? Uh, yes, this, uh, the Celebrite software uh, does extract uh, information from the phone, and there's also data that I put in that's case-related, notes, that type of thing uh, related to the phone, and that's the first couple pages of the report. Now, can everyone turn their uh, uh, booklets to pages four and five, and can you please explain to the jury, um, Mr. Zulke, what, um, uh, what is the information captured on those two pages? Uh, the, the first two pages, uh, again, is a combination of data that the software is extracting. Um, the data that the examiner uh, puts in, if you, if you go down to the third item from the bottom, case number, from that point down, so case number, case name, evidence number, uh, all the way down to the last item of the top page notes, that's put in by the examiner. Uh, the rest of the data, um, the connection type, uh, extraction, start date, time date, that's all extracted from the software. So on the bottom of page five, um, the second to last item is MSISDN. Um, do you see that? Yes. Uh, and right beside that is a, is a, a series of numbers. What is that? Uh, that's the uh, phone number associated with the uh, SIM card, or in this case, this, this telephone. And that is 313-458-2311? Yes. Was so that automatically extracted by software? Yes, it is. Now, can we turn to the next page, page number six? Now, were you able to uh, extract uh, photographs from the phone? Which you were just presenting? Uh, yes, I was. Now, can we turn to page seven? What is that that um, is on page seven? Can you walk the jury through what this information shows then? Um, yes, it's a photograph. Uh, it's, uh, it, it was a photograph that was in the DCIM. If you look in the upper left where it says name and path, the path where it's internal storage, DCIM uh, slash dot thumbnails, and then it gives a, a series of numbers, dot JPG, JPEG, that's a, a photograph format. So this particular for, uh, photograph uh, was uh, on the phone at one time. And right beside that information, it, uh, it, the, up on the top it says created, it says 5-12-2015, um, and then it gives a, a time. What does that information mean? Uh, that's the date and time that the photograph was either taken by the phone or um, downloaded uh, onto the phone. And this photograph was uh, on the phone that you uh, examined? Right? Yes, it was. Now, can you please turn to the page? <coughs> Same thing as this. 
photograph? Yes, this is uh, another photograph. And what about on page nine? Yes, this is another photograph. And um, uh, that too is on uh, 512? <coughs> that's correct. Now on page 10, what about this? Another photograph that was examined? Yes, this is another photograph, same date. On page 11? Yes, another photograph on uh, May 15th. And page 12, please. Yes, um, this one's different from the rest. If you look at the over to the left, the path, this one was stored on the, in the same location in the DCIM folder, uh, but it came from Facebook. So it was a Facebook photograph that was downloaded to the phone. And created on 516? Yes, yeah. downloaded on 516. Downloaded, thank you. Now, what about the next um, page, page 13? Um, Yes, another photograph uh, on May 19th. Yes. Now, uh, turn our attention to page 14, timeline. Um, is there a timeline that you're able to extract from the phone information regarding the timeline? Yes, the, um, the Celebrate software will do some basic analysis. Um, and it'll take time and date stamps uh, of the various items, your texts, uh, your, your um, photographs, and it'll chronologically order all those artifacts from the phone. So you as an examiner uh, can look at uh, the items in question in a chronological format. Now, turning the page to page 15, what was the first event recorded on this telephone? Uh, this first event on May 8th, uh, if you look at the middle timestamp, uh, the phone uh, was activated uh, from a payment, a $41 payment made on it. And that's what the first line uh, yes. reflects? That yes. Yes. I'm sorry, is that what the first line there reflects? Okay. Um, now, turning our attention to uh, page 16. Were you able to extract text messages from this phone? Yes, I was. Um, now, turning to the next page. Can you please walk the jury through column by column what each of these columns mean? Uh, sure. The, the first column is um, each item is given a sequence number. So the first item is going to be number one. This happens to be item number 572. Uh, this, uh, the next column is the actual uh, status, uh, whether it was sent or received. Uh, in this case, this item was sent to this number, 313-828-1788. It was sent on May 8th at 9.15, or 9.15, p.m. Uh, Universal uh, um, Coordinated Time or Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, and then the column um, Next to it, where it says sent, that's the status. So the, the the text message in this case was actually sent, and uh, the contents is the next column where the contents is I'm about to get a crib soon. And turning our attention to the next page, uh, so on uh, 510, 2015. Um, is it fair to say that a message was sent from that phone saying, shit, wanted to see if you wanted to make some money, and then a message was sent back to that phone, Kevin, where are you? And then another message sent back to that phone saying, yeah, I do have Yes, that's correct. These are, um, again, stored in chronological order, so uh, the most recent is always going to be the top um, message, in this case, uh, message number 528. So. Uh, five, uh, item number 530, uh, it was sent, and then two um, text messages received uh, right after that.
The most recent is the, the top. Oh, yes. Thank you. Now, turning our attention to the next piece, page 19. Am I correct to say that from 519, a message was sent from that phone saying, Hey, bro, you coming? Because I want to holla at you anyway, and I need you to take me to the place. And then a message sent back to that phone saying, I'm going to come, but I ain't going to lie. I don't know, or IDK, if I will be available to take you to that checky place. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. May I uh, take that and give it back from you? And I believe this has been admitted exhibit number 27. It has. Now, did you examine any other phones for this case, Mr. Zulke? Uh, yes, I did. I think that's what he's doing. Isn't it? He's going yeah. to another cell phone. Right? I, I'm about to go to another cell phone. I, I leave it in the court's discretion, however you'd like us to proceed. Oh, were you talking about cross-examining? Yes, Judge. About, um, I don't think I'm going to do that. Okay. I'm going to let, let them put in uh, the evidence they want to put in, and then you can cross-examine that. All right, Judge. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, I'm approaching with what has been uh, remarked. People's proposed exhibit number 293. Could you please take a look at that and after you've had it, oh, and I'll uh, open it up if you want. And um, after you've had a chance to look at the conference, please. Take a look at that. Uh, this is one of the phones that I uh, conducted an examination on. And how do you know that? Again, I've got my initials and date on it, um, and I identify it's got two unique uh, evidence item numbers, 1B17 and the Detroit PD 542-320-22. Um, Thank you. Now, I'd move to admit this solely for identification purposes only as exhibit number 293. All right, for the limited purposes by identification only, it will be received. Now, did you perform a, an extraction report for this phone similar to the one that you did for the other phone, sir? Yes, I did. Now, I'm approaching with what has been pre-marked with people's proposed exhibit number 183. What is that that I just put into your hands? Uh, this is a copy of the report uh, that I generated for the extraction of the cell phone in question. And that's a fair and accurate copy of the report? Uh, yes, it is. And how do you know that, sir? Um, I've had a chance to review it. It has my initials and date on it. Now, I move to admit this, again, for identifi identification purposes only as exhibit number 183. Acknowledging, Your Honor, that that came uh, from a duly executed uh, search warrant um, and return to service. All right, thank you. For identification purposes only, go ahead. Now, now I'm approaching with what has been pre marked with people's proposed exhibit number 180. Can you take a look at that and after you've had a chance to look it over, please look back up at me?
two pages that are blank? Yes. Yeah. Is that okay? Thirteen and eighteen. Yeah, they're they're excerpts from the report that I generated. And those are fair and accurate excerpts from that report that generated the phone? Yes, they are. I, I move to admit this as the next exhibit. Acknowledged, Your Honor. All right, it will be received. Now, may I distribute copies to the jury of that? Yes. Uh, no, it was not. Um, uh, but this explains which phone it is and the telephone number that uh, relates to that phone. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Now, turning our attention to page two of the um, summary report, it says, on May 23, 2015, Sergeant Donald Ferris collected his phone in LG MS 323 and 12713 St. Mary's during an execution of a search warrant there. Below is a picture of the phone taken at that location. It's number is 313 948 Is that a fair uh, statement of what's said on that page? Yes. And uh, there's an agreement and stipulation between the parties that that's correct, Mr. Acknowledged. Lee, that that's a standard statement. All right, that stipulation will be received. Now, just as with the last phone, there's introductory information that uh, was assembled as to this telephone when you ran the uh, Celebrate um, examination on the phone. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, and that's uh, pages four and five. Now, turning our attention to page five, if you will. Um, at the very bottom of page five, the second to last line, um, uh, is there any place that uh, says what the telephone number for that phone is? Yes, I have number nine, the MSISDN, Mobile Station uh, International Subscriber Directory Number, is what that stands for. I mean, that's the actual phone number. And that was extracted automatically from the phone, is that correct? Not something that you put in? That's correct. Now, turn your attention to page six. Were you able to extract any photographs from this phone? Yes, I was. Turn to page seven. What is this that's on page seven? Um, this is an actual um, image that was uh, on the cell phone in question that was extracted. And just so you can be clear, that the image is the bottom part of the page, is that correct? That that's that's correct. And the top part, it, it, when you have an image on a phone, is there information that's associated with that image? Yes, the exit data um, gives additional information to the phone. The name of the file, uh, size. Uh, time date sometimes, uh, even the device that may have taken the uh, photo. And so that's what the information up above is? That's correct. So when you open the phone or are looking through photographs, would you see, or would, would you see the photograph or would you see the exit date? Uh, you would see the photograph. And this is one of the photographs extracted from that phone, is that correct? Yes, it is. Now turning our attention to page 8, this is another um, photograph and uh, associated information with that photograph that was extracted from that phone? Yes. And uh, on, that, uh, uh, on that image, what's the name on that that appears to be a check? Uh, the name is um, Timothy Russell. Now turning our attention to page 9, are you able to extract, if they exist, um, contacts uh, from a telephone? Uh, yes, contacts that the um, user has actually input into the phone can be extracted from the phone. And were you able to extract from here, from this phone? Uh, yes. Now, can you turn our attention to page 10? What is this that uh, is on that page? These are uh, three different uh, entries that the user of the phone put, uh, named the three different entries, all Kev. 
and uh, the three different entries uh, have uh, three different phone numbers associated with the contact that uh, has been named Kev. Now turn your attention to the next page, page 11. <coughs> Um, are those other contacts on page 11? Yes, these are two other. Um, the contact name is Nunu, and two phone numbers associated with Nunu. Now, when, um, when a text message is sent to or received from one of these um, uh, numbers, which is associated with the contact name, what happens with that name as far as um, extraction of data? Or a certain text. Well, when the text is sent, the name associated with this, the text and that number goes with uh, with that text. Now, I'd like to turn our attention to page 14. Now, on page 14, it's fair to say that uh, on January 15th, a message was um, sent to the phone saying, who is this? And on that same day, uh, January 15th, a message was sent from that phone saying Tim. That's correct. So 681, the message was received, item 681, item 680 um, was sent. Now on page 15, we can turn there. Um, now in the third column, it gives a telephone number and then beneath that, the name Kev. Is, is that what you're referring to as far as a contact being associated with a number or a message? Yes, that's correct. So in this case, this phone um, uh, was in the inbox. This message was in the inbox from Kev. So a message was sent from that number, from Kev. That's mm -hmm. correct. And and if you go over one, two, three, four, five, to the sixth column, that message was actually read as well. Now, in the message read... If that goes through, I'm going to give my mama $100 to see her car for two days, then I'm going to hit a lick to get some more money. Is that correct? That's correct. And that was uh, sent uh, from the number associated with Kev to uh, this phone uh, on January 16, 2015. Is that correct? That's correct. <coughs> now, turning our attention to the next page, page 16. Uh, who is... Who are these messages from? These are also from Kev. And on January 17, 2015, was a message sent from Kev uh, saying, Hey, bro, she didn't answer, but if I get my mom a car and got to come get you, we can get need some gas. And then uh, later on, uh, that same day, from Kev, it says, Dog, pick the phone up. Is that correct? No, uh, that's correct. Now, on the next page. Page 17. Now, is this a message from Nunu on January 18th? I was sent to this phone saying, call me, bro, it's about money. That's correct. It's in the inbox, yes. Turning to page 19. On page, excuse me, um, are these messages sent to and from Kev? On January 20th? Uh, yes, that's correct. And the, um, the messages go as follows, that a message was sent from Kev to this phone saying, you at work, and then, uh, uh, and then, and then to Kev saying, yeah, where you at, or why, or why W-A, uh, you hit one, and then uh, from Kev, saying, hell no, nah, I was at the crib sleep, and then from Kev again, saying, Lil Diego still got the car, and then to Kev, nope, and then from Kev, shit, I'm trying to do that one thing with them hammers, I might have to use my mama shit then, and then from the phone back to Kev, saying, okay, be safe, my nigga. Is that a correct statement of what is, uh, the message is on that phone? No, that's correct. The next page, page 20, is a message sent um, from Kev to this phone on January 29th saying, bro, I need the money for the mag, and then um, later on that day saying, fuck dog is up with y'all niggas. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And then finally, on January 31st, there's a message sent um, 
from Kev saying, bring that mask tomorrow, don't forget. And then message from the phone back to Kev saying, okay. That's correct. Further, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Mr. McWilliams. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Special Agent. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. Um, your job is quite tedious looking at numbers, are they not? Um, I wouldn't describe it as tedious, but yes, it's, it, it's very detailed. Yes. Very detailed. We can yes. see that. And you've had a good deal of training on this? Yes, I have. You testified in court about these matters? I've testified in digital evidence, that's correct. Okay. And uh, are you certified? I was certified. I'm in the process of getting recertified. Okay. And how often do you have to do that? The certification process, uh, a proficiency test is done annually for okay. the certified examiners. Okay. And is that uh, done independently on a blind um, testing basis? The um, independent, what do you mean independently? We well, you're monitored by s either supervision or yes, outside that's correct. agency? Yes, it's monitored by, uh, it's not an outside agency, it's within the Bureau. Okay. And uh, we've significantly uh, stated your area of expertise, is that correct? That's correct. All right, thank you. Now, how many phones have you described uh, here today? Two phones. Okay. And you saw phone numbers, did you not? I saw phone numbers, that's correct. Okay, and each phone number had a specific uh, phone number. That's correct. Were you able to extract and tell who the owner of each one of those phones was or who whose name those phones were in? The no, let, me the let me ask you this. Did you look up the billing records of wh where the phone was purchased and what phone service was used for no, the I did name not. of the customer? No, I did not. Okay. Did that have any significance to you? Um, as a forensic examiner, uh, my job is to remain as objective as possible and, and examine just the evidence that's submitted to us. So anything outside of the cell phone is not within our purview to do an investigation. So in this case, no, we, uh, my job was to pull what was off the phone. Okay. So the name and who's, who was personally identified with that phone is not relevant to your job? Correct. Okay. And um, in the course of uh, looking at the extractions, are you able, with your expertise, to tell where those phones were when the extractants that you've described, either in photograph or in words, were made? Um, Not the extractions where those entries were made, I should say. Uh, no. Okay. So you don't do anything with coord coordinates, do you? No, I do not. Longitude, latitude, uh, tower name, tower identification? No, cell tower and cell location based on cell tower information is a separate expertise and analysis. Okay. And that's separate from you? That's correct. Okay. And so you didn't mean to, to leave that out or not discuss it, did you? No, it's not within my purview or my okay. expertise. All right. And when you talk about um, uh, various um, contacts, we're talking about a directory in a phone, are we not? That's correct. Okay. And that's where a person would enter in uh, someone's name, telephone number, email address, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Okay. And persons don't, well, let me just put it this way. In, this, in these particular two phones, there's not a la full last name, a full first name of the person whose contacts were identified in these two cell phones. That, that you've described. Isn't that true? No, that is correct. Okay. So we're talking about somebody with well, the nickname of Nunu. You heard that? You saw that name? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And you saw the name of that person, Kev? 
That's correct. You don't have any significance to those names, do you? No. And as a matter of fact, maybe even in the course of your years of examination, those may in fact have been um, names of other persons or, or fairly common names, sir? Um, they could be? Yes. Okay. I, I, you don't have to remember everything. Yeah. But, but you don't you don't have any idea the person that they were exchanging or in fact talking about, do you? No, that's correct. Okay. And um, when um, you made these examinations, were they under some scientific um, laboratory that, that you have that you operate out of? Yes, our laboratory uh, in the Detroit FBI office is I a see. controlled access uh, laboratory. Okay, and these items that you receive are um, secured? Yes. And that there would not be any chance of tampering or anything like that? No, that's correct. Okay. You have no idea who these phone numbers are connected with of these two cell phones or any of the numbers that they that came back and forth, do you? No, that's correct. I do not know the subscriber. And you would agree that there may be tons or millions of persons named Kev in this world. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. And you have no idea who who any particular Kevin or Kev would be, isn't that correct? That's correct. of the contents of these phones, did you notice that there were three different telephone numbers that were identified under the name of Kev? Uh, yes. Okay. And they were all different, were they not? Yes. So I could very well represent that there were more than one Kev being represented that a person might in fact know more than one Kev. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else, Mr. King? No, Your Honor. Any questions by the jurors? Agent, thank you, sir. You can step down. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You have another witness? Yes, Your Honor. We've called this time uh, Mike Yauk, Y A U K. testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth shall be God. Please have a seat. Adjust the microphone in front of you, please. Yeah. Please. Good morning. Good morning. Can you please introduce yourself to the jury? My name is Michael Yauk. I am a, a senior forensic examiner for the FBI. And how long have you been working for the FBI? Uh, since about 2010. Could you briefly describe your duties and responsibilities um, uh, as a specialist with the FBI? Sure. Uh, our particular group, the Computer Analysis Response Team, is responsible for analyzing all kinds of electronic evidence, uh, cell phones, tablets, computers, um, PDAs. And, um, um, and, uh, you're, and, oh, 
Uh, how long have you, you, you yourself performed uh, examinations on cell phones? Well, with the Bureau uh, since two 2010, uh, but I was involved in law enforcement training uh, here in the state of Michigan since uh, about 2003 to 2010 before that. Have you received any specialized training in the area of cell phone extractions? Yes. Can you just briefly describe some of that to the jury? Uh, the training? Yes, please. Uh, some of the training is a more generalized uh, as to how, how cell phones work and operate. Uh, and some training is more specialized, uh, focusing specifically on types of phones, uh, Android phone versus an iPhone, or the type of software that we actually utilize. And about how, how often or how much training have you had in this area? Uh, a couple hundred hours over do you supervise five years. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, um, it was just over five years. Now, um, do you supervise others in this area? I supervise our uh, forensic examiner trainees. Uh, for, for the FBI, is that correct? Yes. And uh, what kind of cell phones um, have you analyzed or, or do you analyze in uh, the course of your duties with the FBI? Well, lately, it's prim primarily two different types of phones, an Android phone and an uh, Apple iPhone. And um, now, uh, you work with the same uh, office as Mr. Randy Zulke, is that correct? Yes. And you have the same uh, procedures in that office as far as uh, obtaining the phone and so on? Yes. And um, now, are you familiar with this case, and, or I should say, uh, have you examined any phone with connection to this current case? Yes. Now, I'm approaching with what has been hmm. pre-marked as exhibit number 273, people's proposed exhibit number 273. <coughs> Can you please open up that package, and after you've had a chance to review its contents, please look back up at me. What is that that just put into your hands? Uh, this is a phone I examined. Uh, in connection with this case? Yes. Um, now, I'd move to admit this solely for identification purposes. Um, and it's exhibit number, I believe it's 273. For identification purposes only at this time, any objection, Mr. McWilliams? No, Your Honor. All right. It will be received for identification purposes only. Now, in your examination of this cell phone, did you generate a cell phone report, an extraction report? Yes. Now, I'm approaching with what has been uh, remarked as uh, 184. So acknowledged. Can you please take a look at this, sir? Sure. What is that that just placed into your hands? This is a copy of the report I produced for this particular telephone. And how do you know? Uh, my initials are on it. And um, that's a fair and accurate copy of the report generated uh, from the extraction of this phone? Yes. Um, I move to admit this as uh, solely for identification purposes as Exhibit 184. <coughs> Any objection for identification purposes? No, Your Honor. Uh, 184 will be admitted for identification purposes only at this time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now I'm approaching with people's proposed exhibit number 181. Can you please take a look at that and after you've had a chance to review it, please look up at me. All pages? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll quick flip through. Okay. Uh, it's a number of pages uh, that contain excerpts from the report, uh, the CD. And are those fair and accurate uh, selections from the report that you generate from the phone that you just were placed in your hands? Yes. Um, and how do you know that? Um, my name is on the report on the third page, I believe. I move to admit this as the next exhibit, exhibit number uh, 181, Your Honor. Your Honor, acknowledging that uh, this uh, extraction came from a cell phone which was uh, under due uh, um, duly executed search warrant and return of service. All right, I'll, re I'll receive into evidence uh, proposed exhibit 181. And may I uh, hand out copies to the jury? Right now? Yes.
Now, uh, looking at the front page, um, uh, this this is just a cover page, is that correct? Not something that you generated from your um, uh, extraction from the cell phone, is that correct? Correct. This is just, yeah. a just a cover page. Uh, for the phone Z970, and that, that's, the, that's the phone that you did examine. Is that, that is the model of the phone. The model of the phone. Um, now, turning our attention to the second page in this packet, that says on May 22nd, 2015, Officer DeAndre 10 collected this phone of Z970 from Timothy Russell during lawful arrest of Ms. Russell, Mr. Russell on that date. This number is 313-948-0680. Um, is that a fair statement of what's on that page? <coughs> yes. And, uh, and believe that the parties agree that uh, that is uh, where this phone came from, um, Mr. Timothy Russell or his car on that day. Is that a stipulation? Acknowledge, uh, Your Honor. All right. Subject okay. uh, uh, incident to a lawful arrest. Okay. All right. Now, oh, in your analysis of this phone, were you able to uh, generate any introductory information? We yes. Turn our to page three and then page four. Um, now, what can you describe what's on page four for the jury? Page four is a, a screenshot of the report that was produced uh, and is currently on the CD. Uh, this is the introductory page. Uh, the information near the top, the case information, case ID, report date, analysis name, and tool name uh, were all input by me. Now, turning our attention to the next page, page five. Can you describe what information is on that page? Uh, this is the phone identification page. Think of this as like a, a website, and you can click the links on the left-hand side. This is the phone identification section, and this actually identifies what the device's phone number currently is. And was that input by you, or is that extracted from the phone? That's extracted from the phone. Now, turning our attention to the next page, were you able to um, extract any text messages from this phone that you can? Yes. We can turn our attention to page seven. Can you um, walk us through what's on this page? Sure. If we start on the first line, the top line, <coughs> on the leftmost column, uh, that is a, a date and time in UTC time. What is UTC? Uh, we, we are in the Eastern time zone, so we would adjust from this date and time to, to the time zone that, it w it w that existed at that time. So it's either a minus four or minus five when you set your clocks. So in this particular case, this is minus four. And, and just so uh, j just so we're clear, is the UTC is that almost like a universal time standard often used by uh, electronic companies, and from that uh, time standard, uh, we can get Eastern Standard Time or Central Time or so on and so on by adding or subtracting hours to that universal time. Yes, and based on your phone setting. Uh, it will automatically adjust those times for you. Uh, we display them in UTC. I understand. Thank you. And what about the next column, the inbox, red, and then the phone number? Uh, think of this as a folder. Uh, on the top message, it, uh, this message was contained within the inbox. So this was received on this device. And where was this received from, if you can tell? The uh, next column over, there is a phone number, 313-458. 2311. And then um, a couple columns over from that, uh, is that the uh, information that was, or the text that was received from that uh, number, or the message that was sent? Yes, that's the content of that message. And now here it says, um, uh, does it, um, which, which comes first actually? Is it the bottom line or the top line? The uh, top line came first. And does that read, grab the mag and shells, come on bright? Correct. And then, uh, a message uh, sent from the phone that you examined says where the shells at? Correct. Line two was sent from the phone to the phone number listed there, 313-458-2311. Now, in turning our attention to the next page, page eight. Um, now, were these messages uh, sent and received on 5-19, May 19, 2015? 
Yes. And uh, do the messages, um, they're all in from another phone, is that correct? They were received from another phone? Correct. And do the messages uh, were received from 313 is that correct? That's correct. And the messages read, see if Messia let you see the car, nigga, because I need a ride. And I let my mom go to her job interview at 10.30. Then after that, man, what up? Then after that, ready to eat. And then after that, you still got the clothes. I'm spending the night at your house. Is that correct? Yes. And those were all sent from uh, that number, 313-458-2311. Um, correct. Now, the next page, um, page 9. Would you be able to retrieve any messages sent or received from uh, through the Facebook application? Yes. And turning the attention to um, page 10, um, do those messages include Dem 40 bullets still there? Shit, it's like four or five, and OD's nine bullets, is that correct? Yes. Now, here, this is not sent from a cellular, or, or this, this isn't sent in the same way that the previous messages were sent, is that correct? Correct. Um, um, and this, so this does not necessarily show you that these were sent uh, from uh, from that number or from that same phone number, is that correct? Right, the second or third column have user identifiers, those aren't phone numbers. So, and, and that's the string numbers there? Yes. And, and those, so those are not to your knowledge, associated with the telephone number that were in the last two uh, messages. Stuff, right? No. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. McWilliams. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. And good morning, Special Agent. Good morning. Um, just tell us a little bit more about your qualifications uh, and experience in either testifying or in cases that you've had? Sure. Um, I began in the field in 2003 at a local university. Uh, I was responsible for a state-funded, <coughs> two state-funded grant programs for law enforcement training in digital uh, cybercrime and com computer forensics. In around 2007, at that same local university, uh, a degree program developed and I was responsible for teaching the academic courses there to the general university population. In between that time, I was also assisting law enforcement with any cases that may have, have come in during that period of time. And in 2010, I made the jump to the FBI. Okay. Thank you very much. And you've testified in court? Yes. And here in the, the Eastern District of Michigan federally? Uh, Eastern District federally. And how about Third Circuit or Circuit Court of the uh, State of Michigan? Uh, Washington County. Okay, all right. Um, and th this particular case, you had a phone number, did you not, from a telephone or cell phone, did you not? Initially, the phone number wasn't known. Okay. I needed to perform the analysis in order to determine the phone number. And you did that? Yes. And that's represented in uh, the document that you've just talked about, isn't that correct? Yes. Do you have any personal knowledge as to who um, that phone number, uh, whose name was uh, connected with that particular phone number account? No. Does it make any difference to you either about that or what uh, cell service was being used by for that number? My, my piece of, of the puzzle is to anal analyze the data on the phone and then hand that information over to the investigators. We don't we don't seek out additional warrants. Okay. Uh, that's that's another role. And you did that from this phone. Correct. And the, on this particular phone, other than what you have testified to, there was lots of other additional evidence. There were a number of other items. Well, a number of items. Yeah. And uh, the prosecutor mm -hmm. pulled these items off, indicating some significance as to this case. Is that what your understanding was? Yes and you then formulated them, documented them, and w w that's what your report is about. Is that correct? Well, the report was generated before this process began. Uh, I performed an analysis on a number of phones, generated the report, and submitted that to our evidence. At that point, that information goes to a case agent or task force officer to review. Okay. You have no idea whose phone number in w 
actually the person that's connected to receiving or sending messages on that phone. Isn't that true? True. Okay. And so um, it would probably also be true, would it not, with regard to uh, whose uh, Facebook, um, the testimony that you've just given us about was or is? Can you rephrase? Yes. You gave something with regard to a Facebook uh, message, did you not? Yes. Do you have any idea from whose Facebook that was? Other than the contact information, no. Okay. Did the content information give you a clue as to who the person was? Uh, you're able to enter a name when you sign up for Facebook. Uh, some people use nicknames. Some people use real names. From, from from the documentation that you've described here, did you get the name of a person? Uh, it's not I included in this packet, okay. no. Thank you. Um, the messages that went back and forth, you don't know. have any idea who the the either the delivery person or the um, or the recipient of those messages were, do you? In this packet, I know which direction the messages were going. Okay, that's understandable because they're either incoming calls or outgoing calls. Is that correct? Uh, and the Facebook messages as well. Oh, the Facebook. Okay, yes. but you can't tell us the identity of a person. No. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much. Nothing further. Any questions by the jurors? All right. Thank you so much. You may be excused. Another witness? At this time, I think we'll call Sergeant Ron Gibson. We expect this testimony to be worthy. Potentially, Judge. All right, let's take 10 minutes left right now, ladies and gentlemen, so we don't break it up. We'll be back uh, in 10 minutes. All right, for the jury.